of year list. Go. All right, I'm listening to Ghost Bath. You can probably tell. Moon Lover. Got its uh, American release this year. Yay. But of course we all heard this last year. But, good, good album. For us, a good release of 2016. Several things like that happened. So I understand it's a little early to be posting this. Still a few weeks left. Like even um, now we uh, had the Anteus record drop recently. And uh, so this list could not be 100% accurate by the end of the year. But as of now, this is my end of year list. Um, of course, want to talk about a few things that aren't on my list. But first tell you about uh, how my list has been formed and has changed. I considered uh, album playability. So whereas, uh, can I put the album on and let it play all the way to the very end without having to skip filler tracks? Also, um, which ones would I, at the end of the album, then restart and play again? Like, that would be another uh, high score. Also, um, packaging, like, did they do elaborate packaging, let out really cool releases? I, I think those kind of things are cool, which ties in also, does the album cover fit the sound and the feel, you know, uh, or intention of the record? Uh, this is the album as a, as a whole, and I feel like uh, 2016 we saw some good comebacks from a lot of bands. It was like a good comeback year, and a uh, year of, uh, maybe it was just me, but I felt like atmospheric music played a big role this year with uh, not only black metal like we're used to, but other fields too. Atmospheric, I feel like, is uh, kind of having a little, little bit of a more upbring to it. So, here's some albums that I expect to be on other people's end of year list that is not on my end of year list. Not because I dislike them, just because I'm way more obsessed with some other records. Uh, so, Death Fortress put out their uh, Death March of, Deathless March of the Unyielding, I believe is what it was titled, which was a really solid death metal release, just, you know, not, uh, not my obsession. Uh, AMSG, that was a pretty big record. I uh, saw a lot of guys uh, reviewing, and uh, that that one had a huge impact. I have a feeling will be on many lists. The Nails release, which I believe is going to be their last release. I don't know. I kind of, you know, that's kind of rumored. <laughs> Katilist, they put out their record this year. Uh, I forget what it was titled, but uh, Atmospheric, like I was saying, Atmospheric Death. And it was really quality. Shrine from Iceland with Unortha. That's going to be on some lists, guaranteed. Uh, Nadra, Nadra, however you say it, also from Iceland, their album this year. Urfaust recently made a good album drop that I could see having potential. And Destroyer 666 uh, with their, uh, what was the album called, Wildfire? Um, that one didn't stick with me as much. I, uh, I, I bought the CD and had it spinning in my car for a couple weeks and I really wanted to like it. Uh, thrash from Australia it, it, you know it was another comeback album uh, like I said yeah atmospheric and comebacks this year you know destroyer 666 being one nails being one uh, and we'll, we'll get to some others <laughs> all right so um oh another one yeah a bath a bath put out his solo project this uh, starting of the year it was like the first release I was excited about and uh, not that I disliked it again I own it and it's just that you know it got beat out by some other stuff wasn't 100% what I was hoping for, but not a disappointment at the same time. So, uh, let's get started. My number 15 release of the year for me is Al Mirkvi, Pupil of the Searing Maelstrom. This is an atmospheric, uh, kind of sludgy, doomy uh, project of the guitar player from Sinmara. I'm pretty sure I did a video over it uh, earlier this year. This album is great, like, for me, like, thinking music. Uh, I'm doing homework or something, and it's just like this matting, <laughs> this thought process, the gears are turning really with that record. Uh, number 14, I have, oh, Sorcerer to Glass, North, came out this year, uh, black metal from Canada. I really was hoping this would have been like a higher up list. Honestly, in all of the SDG uh, releases, this is my least favorite. But that's not saying anything bad because I love all their material so much and I love this too but it's not grabbing me as much as their older artwork. But again, good, really good record and uh, I'd recommend, well, I don't have the vinyl because it only exists on CD. I think Celestial Oak Productions owned by Sean Count Blagrith is working on 
a vinyl pressing of their first stuff, so which I would be excited for. And you know, anything from these guys is good. Monarch is just an amazing vocalist, all around songwriter. Number 13, Baptism let out the Devil's Fire this year. Uh, this is black metal from Finland. And I was super stoked about it immediately because uh, the song that they leaked first featured the vocalist from Swallow the Sun, and I just love that band so much. But the album as a whole did fall again a little short. Uh, did not impact me as much as I hoped, but obviously it didn't do too bad because it is number 13 on my end of the year list. Uh, Baptism, Devil's Fire, yes, great, great record, but um, it's one of those uh, painting itself in the corner kind of situations after a while. Uh, number 12, Ghoul let out Dungeon Bastards. What a fucking fun, fun release. Like anything from Ghoul. Uh, this one, of course, folds out into the board game. Uh, super fun. Uh, they cleaned up the recording sound for this release, but at the, at the same time, it was still aggressive enough to um, meet any expectations for me of a Ghoul record. This was an absolutely solid release. I have I have really no, no bad things to say about it, but... Um, I think after one or two listens, I, I put it down, and it'll be a it'll be a little bit before I pick it back up. That would be the only bad. Uh, number eleven, uh, I'm bringing in Vector Terminal Redux. This is just overall a great, great compositionally put together record. This is just I, I love the the uses usage of um, the choir. It really creates an epic atmosphere too. If you're a guitar player and you don't know about Vector, dude, pick any record. They're all good. But their album this year, I feel like, was exceptionally well done. Uh, guitar work, compositional work. Uh, the overall uh, concept of the record is good. The album artwork is good. The album artwork fits this record. This is a solid release. Um, number 10 for me, I actually don't own a physical copy of Void Meditation Cult's Utter the Tongue of the Dead. Man, now that is a great record, but I don't own it because the vinyl release is coming out in January, and for, I guess I'm a cheapskate, I didn't buy the CD. But yes, that is a good good record. I, it's, I should have waited again, not only because more releases are coming out, uh, but because I don't have a copy of Void Meditation Cult yet, which is, which is number 10 absolutely on 2016 list on my radar. Uh, moving forward, number nine, Black Funeral, Anko and the Death Fire. Um, Black Funeral is a one-man project from Houston, Texas, which usually focuses on Satanism and occultism. Uh, he has also written several books on the topics that you could pick up if you're interested. But this album is a little extra special because it features the dude from uh, Drowning the Light. Uh, they came together and, from what I understand, recorded this album not even in the same countries. I don't know how accurate that is, but I do believe that's uh, what it, that's the poster right there that came with it. And this release, I feel like, is so powerful because the concept is there. The concept comes through, and uh, it takes me on a journey. Absolutely takes me on a journey, and it makes me want to spin it again and again and again and again and again. Black Funeral, great release from Black Funeral this year. Uh, number eight, Dinfari, Vekfer Timans atmospheric black metal from Iceland and uh, that is a picture of Iceland there uh, this totally caught me off guard my wife just brought this home from Iceland I may have done a video over that this year I think I did um, but this again album cover fits the music beautifully and this is a journey journey of an album and uh, absolutely consumes me and gotta play it again it's just such such quality musicianship done there uh, next up, this is another comeback record, number seven, I Got Dark Funeral, Where Shadows Forever Reign. Um, I was shocked when the album came out because my favorite song to this day is the title track that they leaked before the rest of the record came out, but it didn't let me down because a lot of these were just amazing tracks uh, to carve another wound. Brutal. Uh, it's great to see them come back. This is uh, well put together. The, the drums, as always, are blasting in your face, but they're done so technically perfect that it makes a great sound, man. And these guys are killing it right now. Uh, I also like their new vocalist that's on here. His other project, Gray, is also worth looking into. But yeah, Dark Funeral put this out this year. Good job, dudes. Hail fucking Satan. Next up, a little bit of death metal coming in at number six. 
Embalmer. Emulations from the crypt. This was a sick release. Remember earlier in the video I was talking about nice packages like solid being done? Dude, what Embalmer did this year with this? It's just classic. I mean, a lot like what uh, Hell's Bangers did with their re-release of uh, There Was Blood Everywhere where you could get it in the blood splatter box with the hatchet and stuff. But what they did this year with the weapons and the box and the blood and stuff, totally cool. Not to mention Chris Moyan artwork fitting the, the music perfectly and being a comeback artist at that and uh, the new vocalist being able to uh, create that same essence as like There Was Blood Everywhere, the the croaks, that croaky death metal, creepy just, it, Emanations from the Crypt as a title fits that vocal style for me, I just like a burp of death, I mean that's what it is, it's just a fucking zombie queef, <laughs> and of course these being on that blood and shit, you know, color variant, great, 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 love it, great, <laughs> huge, it's gonna be huge. Uh, next up, what do I got? Uh, I'm on number five now. Number five. I just did my unboxing on this, the Infernal Sea. I, have, I am so obsessed with this. This is getting to be number five because of my absolute obsession. Constantly spinning it. Uh, yeah, this came out this year, uh, The Great Mortality from the Infernal Sea. Uh, to focus on a song I didn't focus on last time, uh, Entombed in Darkness. I think there's a video for it too. There's this section in there where he's just like doing this and, and when he's doing it, like, I, I can see this, like, cartoon creature with the long nose just, like, you know, writhing to the tempo, and it really creates the image, and when you read the lyrics along with this, like, you feel like it's creating the picture, it's in that, what is that, 12th century Europe where the Black Death is occurring, and, like, it, it creates the scene, and then I see, like, the story progressing, like, this as a concept album is a home fucking run, dude. I can't believe nobody's talking about it yet, but I have a feeling that will change. These guys are underrated, criminally underrated. Check out the infirmacy. Enough sucking their dick. Uh, <laughs> number four. This release, okay, anybody that watched any of my videos or especially if you know me personally knows I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Inquisition. And uh, they made number four. I really expected them to make number one. Uh, with their release this year, I have to read the title from the Bloodshed Across the Empyrean Altar Beyond the Celestial Zenith by Inquisition. Totally solid release. It's, it should have been number one. I don't know what about it. I don't know. It's a little different. I guess uh, what it is is he's doing a little more uh, variations on the vocal, which is good and it works. Uh, I was kind of upset to see that they got rid of Paolo Girardi for this, but at the same time, uh, Dagan's explanation about using the new artist, a little more unknown, a little more underground artist, that's very much in the spirit of black metal. So it's not a 100% bad thing, but at the very end of the day, when I listen to the record, and when I look at it, I don't feel the perfect connection, but it's a good connection. But at the same time, when they went through all the trouble of re-releasing the entire discography, getting it all done with Paul Girardi, it felt like we were setting it up to be like, like, uh, you know, from now on, it's going to be Paul Girardi. That's kind of what I expected. But then again, Inquisition doesn't always do what you expect, and that's kind of been his thing. Uh, one of his uh, other interviews I saw, he was too talking about, oh, I guess doing a big music video would be the obvious next step for us, but that's just not Inquisition. And you know, I fucking respect that. Inquisition did a do uh, solid here. Number three, here we go, guys. Top three. Uh, I have a feeling that this one's going to be on a lot. Of the my number three and number one are going to be on everyone's list. I don't know about number two, but here we are at number three. Blood Incantation, Star Spawn. Come on, you saw it coming. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have one of the red vinyls. Uh, I jumped on this thanks to Canyon Bickle. Thank you, wait, wait, you Canyon. Uh, <laughs> He shot out a little uh, heads up when the uh, sales opened up and I was able to snag one before they sold out. It was like a day or two, they were just, they were gone so fast. But Blood Incantation, Star Spawn, this came out this year. This is technical death metal. Uh, much like Canyon, I am not a huge fan of technical death metal, but when these guys do it, uh, I I love it. It's, um, it's a technicality that keeps me interested. Not It doesn't really burn out like 
I don't know, another release from this year, like Aborted. They put out their uh, record earlier this year, and it was okay. And um, that's really how I define anything from them, even their best stuff. It, it's okay. But these guys are coming at it in a, le a little more... I don't know. It's a different way, but I, I absolutely, absolutely, obviously, number three, loved this record. Spin it a lot. Uh, you can you can pick any track from it, and it's fucking good. But I don't I don't like the posters that come with them. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know. Uh, they they've tried to explain it to me, but still, whatever. Uh, Masarthum, Isolate came out this year. Uh, that came in at number two for me. Obviously, I've been obsessing with this over over the year. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos, then you know I obsess over this record. And if this doesn't count as a release for you, well then I will just replace it with Pillars from the Sarthum of this year, which also gets an equal amount of spins at my house. Uh, number two amount of spins. That's a lot of spins. I'm going to play this thing in half and have to kill myself because I don't know if I'll be able to get another copy. I, I absolutely love this. And my number one record of the year. I have a feeling other people are going to agree with this. This is very likely to be other people's number one. Uh, I had the fortune of seeing this band live. Um, and here it is, man. You oughta, devoid of light. I am lucky enough to have the silver vinyl. Uh, I should totally do an unboxing on that. Uh, if you guys want me to, I, uh, just let me know. I might do it anyway, I don't know. Number one, album of the year, You Are Devoid of Light. What an album. I mean, from the top. And, and you can play it to the end, restart it, and you don't even realize that um, you've been listening to this same record on repeat for two solid hours. Because it's still captivating. It's still good. It's, I mean, it's just start to finish, man. I absolutely love this and... I think 20 years from now, I'm still going to love this record the way I love it right now. And that's why it's number one, man. Uh, it's not dying for me. The love for this is not dying. I I would buy it again. <laughs> if, 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 if I had the option, I would buy it again. I mean, again, I did buy it again. I bought the shirt. I bought the CD. I bought the record. I, I'll buy it again. It's so fucking good. I'm more than happy to support a group like this. And if you guys haven't, somehow haven't heard this, Dude, go listen to it. Just watch the music video and, and you'll, at the end of the video, you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, totally, dude. Anyway, that's my end of the year list. What'd you think about my list? Uh, what's missing? Uh, am I a totally fucking moronic idiot? I can answer that. Yes, I am. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, that's the end of my end of year list. And uh, I'm really excited to see what everyone else has. I have thought a lot on these uh, decisions. And yeah, the, those are my favorites, man. What are your favorites? What do you think? Leave a comment. I don't know. Better that. Little it. Hail Satan.